What's happening my fellow geeks and geekheads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and as you can see we're outside today. It's a lovely day. The birds are chirping their fucking heads off. Now today it's another Pirate Batman cosplay video but it's not an update in terms of new acquisitions of costume pieces or armor. Today is all about displaying certain pieces of the costume, most notably the cow, the torso armor and the weapons belt. Now this is something that is going to be ongoing but today I'm going to show you guys the first part, the main part that I will be building as time goes on. We're more pieces arrive and the costume is finally complete I want to eventually make a suit display like Batman would have back in the pirate days just old dirty just a really crude looking display where he hangs his suit when he's not in battle or out on the high seas now I got the idea noisy bastard now I got the idea to do this number one because it's my day off number two I got a little bit bored and number three Adam Savage from tested with his amazing one day builds I want to see if I could do something in a few hours like a four hour build now the main components of this structure to house these suit pieces will be copper pipe I've got two different types of size copper pipe they're going to be soldered together with certain joints like angle joints and t-split joints so the idea is to slot the weapons belt first the torso armor and then the final piece resistance to the cow. It's going to be a little bit fiddly. I've got no idea what to expect going into it. I haven't drawn up any plans whatsoever. All I have literally is just my copper pipe and a copper pipe cutter. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, guys, so like I said, I completely went into this project with no idea in terms of a design, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to wing it the whole way through because that really tests your knowledge and just thinking on the spot. So what I'm doing here now is making sort of, I guess you could say, a makeshift coat hanger, which is going to slot into where the shoulders are, and it's going to come into a T-joint up and then support the helmet. So I'm just lining up how far I want the helmet in terms of from the torso armor to where the actual helmet will sit. And now I'm cutting that piece of copper pipe there with my copper pipe cutter, with my copper pipe cutter, I should say, which is an absolute godsend. The best 20 bucks I have ever spent at Bunnings Warehouse. Now, as you can see here, I'm just slotting it in place just to get an idea and just slot the helmet. And to me, that looks pretty damn good. So now I've got the copper caps on each end. With that, it's time to solder all these pieces together. Now when I am soldering, I make sure all the pieces have been sanded and cleaned and fluxed. As you can see there, there is some flux paste on all the joints, heating it with some propane gas, and then just some regular lead solder, and just heating it up, and then very lightly just whisping across until it melts into the copper pipe, and just repeat the process for every single joint. And there we are, just soldering the copper cap ends. All right, so there we go. We got ourselves a completed T-joint section. Now, because we don't have four joint system for copper pipe in Australia, we have to, you know, custom make one here. And I'm grinding a groove into the copper pipe and into the T-joint itself. And as you can see there, it fits nice and snug, fluxing it up. And I'm just gonna solder it in place just like the rest of the joints. And you know what? I was pretty damn happy with how that turned out because I thought it would be a pain in the ass, but it turned out a lot better than I had anticipated. And there we go. That kind of actually looks like a sword. Now the next step is to make the prong system to house the belt and it's a matter of heating up the middle of some copper pipe to make it more softer and a lot more malleable. As you can see there, you see starting to discolor and change into that sort of rainbow sort of hue, which means it is like breaking down the molecular structure of the copper pipe itself, which means it is going to be a lot more softer in terms of flattening it out to hammer it out. Now, as you can see that pipe in the front, that is going to be the end result of what we're about to do here. So I'm hammering it down and I've got to flip it over and make sure it's malleable. And as it is, I'm going to smash it down and is a flat surface right there. And I'm just going to thread it around some more copper pipe there and just hammer it till it is in shape. And there we go. Easy done. Now, as you can see here, we've got the corner joint sections on display here, which are going to make the belt sit in place and not going to want to fall off. And we're just going to solder those on. And this was easy. All you had to do is rest them on the copper pipe and just solder them on and then repeat the process upside down. And now I'm just soldering on those corner joints there. 
and I'm just also going back in and reinforcing the corner joints. Now we're doing a test fitting here, and as you can see, when I put that flint lock in, it wants to go off to a side. So we've got to add on an extra piece of copper pipe, just so it can sit straight and flush. Now I'm just going to install another T-joint section here. And we're just going to solder that on right there. So it's all about thinking with sort of an engineering mind when it comes to this type of stuff. You want everything looking uh, natural and flush as if, as if it was sitting on the body itself. And there we go. This took all but 10 minutes, guys. Now, once all the soldering is done, I'm going to get some lacquer thinner, as you can see there, and go back in and just wipe off all that excess uh, burnt flux. And it's just going to make for a much more smoother surface. Now, this is the base I'm going to be using. You guys have seen this before. These bases you get for a couple of bucks at Bunnings Warehouse. Now, I have two sections that are going to be slotted into the base itself, purely because of support and also because of the uh, flintlock holster and making it look a lot more straighter. And this is pretty primitive, guys, but this works for me, just going around with a pen and tracing it onto where I want it. And this is the borer piece we're going to use. This is 19 millimeters, pretty much the same thickness as the standard copper pipe size we are using. And this is just the coast dry bolt, which is going to house the cowl when it is rested on the final display. You can see we're just going to drill and bore in those two holes, which are the exact same size as the copper pipe into the top of the stand. I'm also going to bore a slight groove into the base so when the copper pipe slots in it has a groove to slot into and it's not going to want to move anywhere. Now it's time to paint the base. Firstly, I'm gonna go in with a matte black as you see right here, and then I'm gonna go in with a brown followed by a gold. Now this is just sort of like a crude mashup of all these piratey sort of colors. And then after all the colors have dried or they're starting to dry and kind of go through the gelling process, I'm gonna go in with some sandpaper and just start to rough it up and really weather it up as you can see right there. It just gives it a awesome and just used looking texture. Now to weather the copper pipe itself, I'm just going in with matte black spray paint and just getting a rag or in these case undies. And no, they're not used. These are ones that actually I didn't end up using and just, they're great. They're, they're great to use as rags and stuff. So you just go in and you dab the uh, spray paint off. Don't wipe it, you gotta dab it because that makes it look a lot more organic. Now I'm just going with some aluminium tape to fit the coaster where the cowl is going to fit onto so the coaster has a place to stop instead of sliding all the way down the pipe. As you can see there I've slit some notches in with a Dremel and I'm just going to get a little bar and just pry them apart like a flower when it blooms and they're going to go in with a hammer and just hammer it down so they're all nice and flat and that piece is not going anywhere. And then after that, I then sprayed it with some matte black spray paint. And it's time to fit the pieces in. And I did glue the lid onto the actual box right there, as you can see. Now it's time to fit everything in place and see the end result. So thanks very much for watching guys. All in all, including a lunch break, this took about four hours to complete and majority of the time was spent figuring out how to attach certain parts, most notably the belt pegs. Now I am probably gonna expand upon this, but for now, these are the main components of armor and costume that I want on display and just to have grouped together instead of scattered all over the house. Hope you guys are well, hope you guys are happy. Be silly, be merry. Until next time, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. You wanna get a beer?